Hey, welcome back to the lecture. So in the previous lecture, we successfully got this trace, isn't it? So both in continuous mode as well as single shot mode, right? Now here you see various windows on the software and by using the software, we can analyze this application, how exactly it is behaving. And as I said, the timestamp field is very important. So here you will get uh, the timing details of various events that have occurred in your target. And as I said, we actually got approximately 2000 events before the buffer had overflown. So now the horizontal window, what you are seeing here is actually the timeline window and you can zoom in or zoom out by using your scroll button of the mouse. And here on the left hand side, you are seeing various tabs, isn't it? Cystic tab, a scheduler tab, task one tab, task two tab, timer services tab, and the idle task tab. Now, all these are actually part of your application. So, sometimes the task one may be running, and sometimes task two may be running, sometimes the scheduler is running, sometimes the cystic timer is running. So, the software traces everything by using this horizontal window that is timeline. Now let's understand how to use this timeline window. Let's say I want to trace when the task one is executing. So what I would do is I'll just click on this task one. So I will just use this arrow mark here. Now when I click over that, you can see here this cursor, the green cursor, which is right here. So that is pointing when exactly the task one is running. For example, let me zoom this a bit so now here you can see that this cursor is pointing here so that is beginning of the execution of task one right and you can see that the task one from here it starts and it executes until 878 microseconds so that's the time slot of task one and if you want to know when exactly task one executes again so you have to click this again so this arrow actually takes you to the next scheduling of that task one. Now if I press this once again and here you can see that the task one again executes at this timeline here, right? So you can also see that the corresponding change in the timestamp and you can also see the corresponding change in the event section, right? So and if I again click this and here you can see that it again executes at this timestamp and this time it executes for lesser time let's say 327 microseconds why because of some task yielding or blocking or that may be different causes for that let's explore that later what exactly this application is doing so use this arrow key in order to trace the next scheduling of that uh, particular element so here this actually tracks when and all task one executes and this actually traces when and all the task to execute so this tab is for timer services this is for scheduler so you can see that the scheduler runs at these timestamps isn't it and you can also observe the corresponding change in the events tab all right so that's about the timeline and uh, the event section so the event block actually lists out all the events that have occurred at different timestamps isn't it and the timeline window gives you the clear picture of the scheduling of various tasks, scheduler, cystic handler, interrupts, etc. And uh, if you want to move this uh, blue cursor, what you have to do is you have to select here cursor at 20% of the timeline. Now the cursor is actually placed at 20% of the timeline window. So if you want to move it to middle, what you have to do is you have to choose cursor at center. Now cursor comes to the center part of this timeline and after that so now take a look into this information all right so this is actually the context tab and here you will get various useful information now the first column is name of the uh, application element like this application has cystic execution scheduler execution our task so the user created task that is task one and task two and the system created task the system also creates that means the autos kernel also creates the system task those are called idle task and timer services about which we will explore in a moment don't worry so i'm going to explain each and everything whatever you see here like cystic scheduler the task creation and the system task 
that is idle task and timer services so here you can see that the interrupt is uh, denoted by this symbol so whenever you use this symbol a lightning symbol you should understand that that is an interrupt so interrupt can be triggered by the cystic timer of the processor or by any peripheral so later when we use peripheral you can also see that and this symbol is actually used for scheduler because that is used to schedule the task isn't it the scheduler is the one which is used to schedule the task and about which we are going to explore in a moment and these are actually created by you and these are actually created by the rtos kernel that is timer services and idle task and here you can see that this gives actually the stack information now it is showing that 440 bytes maybe i'm not very sure about that that maybe 440 bytes are available for task 1 for task 2 also same and timer services 964 bytes and uh, you should remember that in priatos each and every task will have its own private stack and it says that the stack for task 1 starts from this address in the ram so that we can verify actually now let's go to the uh, application and let's see the task creation process now let me go to the task create of task 1 and this is a task create and if you just take a look into this code you can see that here it allocates the memory for stack right here it is malloc right so by taking the stack depth what you have mentioned right so what is the stack depth uh, mentioned so the stack depth is so it is this number right config minimal stack size which happens to be this number 130 into 4 that is 520 bytes so maybe it is saying out of 520 bytes 444 are available maybe i'm not very sure about that number and uh, and let's go inside this again and here let's keep a breakpoint so let me keep a breakpoint here let's find out what exactly is the address written by port malloc now let me just debug the code all right now let me hit run so let me do step over and here it is yes it shows this address right so that exactly matches with this number so that is actually the beginning of the stack of task one and this is the beginning of the stack of task 2 in the RAM and this is for timer services and here you can see that another useful column run count so in this 2000 events task 1 actually ran for 369 times so that means total runtime is actually 294 milliseconds out of 0.6 seconds so that makes sense because you can see here task 1 and task 2 are almost same isn't it so approximately it comes around 0.6 isn't it 0.6 second or 600 milliseconds right correct so the scheduler ran for 26 milliseconds out of 0.6 seconds or i can say that 604 milliseconds and cystic ran for 20 milliseconds so and uh, task 2 also ran for 636 times uh, and task 2 also ran for 369 times and uh, the timer services actually ran only one time in this whole application so that means it is getting blocked somewhere so let's find out that later no problem and cystic ran for 603 times and scheduler ran for 604 times great so and this is the last runtime of cystic and uh, if you take task one then when it was executed last time and it actually executed for 918 milliseconds that means approximately one milliseconds so task one's minimal runtime was 0.2 milliseconds now you can trace that go at the end and you can trace that so here it is so let me put here here you can see that 919 microseconds this was the last run of sorry not this this one not this sorry this one so this was the last run of task one 
so when this collection of events ended all right so all this information you can get from this uh, context field and some are it is showing zero maybe uh, that is available for paid version of the software and um, this is a free version right so some features are restricted and uh, great so now i know you have doubts on various aspects of uh, this timeline like cystic execution scheduler execution a timer services idle task everything so let's explore those things one by one let's explore about the idle task what exactly is idle task let's explore about the timer services what exactly is the cystic why it is required how scheduler executes what it does how contact switching taking place can you identify the contact switch here so this is a contact switch right for example let's consider this here it is now let me keep a cursor on one of the events let's say let me put here task run so here it is so here you can see that task one right this is task one was running and here is a contact switch right this is a contact switch to task two right this is task two and after that task two was running and this is a contact switch to task one right so all these things we can explore so before that let's cover some theory and i'll see you in the next lecture so from the next lecture onwards let's trace this uh, main function and let's explore various things and then we can relate that to the events what we have received i'll see you in the next lecture